The interest of most audiences, I think, are to find out <coughs> what the entertainers are off stage. Right. You know, you can always see us performing. You can see us on a million television shows a year, you know, or see us on stage. But to, what's really interesting to me to say about a performer is on a bus or is on a plane or what they talk about backstage, you know. of the first edition, which were Mike Settle, Thelma Camacho, Terry Williams, who's still with the group, and myself, were all members of the New Christie Minstrels at the same time, and we had actually presented most of the material contained in our first album to the Christies in hopes that they would record it as the Christie Minstrels, and uh, the people who owned the Christies at the time felt that it was too great a departure from the accepted image of the Christies, and they were just kind of afraid to gamble with it, and at that point, we decided that, that uh, when you get afraid to gamble with your image then that means you're willing to accept what your image is and you can only go downhill so we decided that aside from that we were working for other people and that we didn't like so we chose to leave that group and form our own group i feel there's two key factors in our group and first of all that there's mutual respect for you. uh secondly i think the second most important thing is the fact that, that we have um that we're very compatible socially and uh, I wanted to start with the overall and then get into the individual because I think it, I think that's a key to the individuals involved. And uh, I'll start with Terry because I've worked with Terry longer than... We uh, did a Johnny Cash show about three weeks ago and in doing so... <coughs> testing. <coughs> testing, one, two. Thank you. We did a Johnny Cash show testing. about... Kenny, this is the only solo you've given me in the whole show, and the, when all these people out here have come in to, have paid to come in, to, some of them paid to come in to see us, and the ones that did pay, um, I, I feel as though I owe something to, and if I'm going to give a performance, it ought to be the best performance possible given by me at the time, at, the, at this particular college, where these people are. I'll tell you, the guy that always has fascinated me is Tommy Smothers. Uh, to me, he's the most fascinating comedian that ever was, because... Uh, whereas the things that he says aren't really hilarious. It's the way that he says them and the facial expressions, obviously. You know, it's really kind of funny how we started into the comedy. I was with the Christies at the time, obviously. And um, uh, in, in a period of about an hour and a half, I had, I had managed to lock seven keys uh, in my room, to my room, oh, consecutively. This is true. I had... Uh, had one key and I locked it in and went back to the office. Got another key, came in, locked it in consecutively till I got number seven. 
So I was immediately tagged with the name Dumb Stupid Terry. And well, we went the group together. We decided that as far as the show went, that we were not going to fabricate characters and uh, that everyone was going to just be themselves and consequently they would be more consistent and more repetitive. If, if you're being yourself, it's easy to be yourself every night. And it was just very fortunate us, for us that Terry happens to be dumb and stupid, so he comes off that way on stage. He's, he's beautiful. And uh, became uh, what I wanted to be as an entertainer, what I wanted to do, and that was basically to make people laugh. Because I think making people laugh is, is the ultimate entertainment if you do it properly and you do it in a way that uh, you can say something a little risque and have it come off cute or have it come off uh, stupid or because i think making people laugh is uh is something that is isn't easy to do so i'm while we're doing but you know i love you know going through the comedy stuff and everything i'm trying to keep my head together and figure out oh, what in the hell am i going to do you know, to get these people on our side. I can see that by looking out in the audience that most of the guys this evening are with very beautiful and lovely young ladies. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. <laughs> that bad? <laughs> Would you have her stand up, please, so we can throw a spot on her? <laughs> no, as I can see, most of the guys, notice I said most of the guys, no. Most of the guys that out there are very, very pretty young ladies, whether they be, you know, like maybe your wife or your, uh, your girlfriend or your aunt or... Are you wearing white socks by any chance? He has the musical ability to be such a superstar on his own. And that's the sad part of what's happened to the group, is the fact that I have, for whatever reasons, it's awfully hard for the public to, to identify with the five people. So, because I had, did the, I had uh, sung the records on the, uh, the singles, I was elected to be the image of the group, so to speak, but there's so much individual talent in the group and I think Terry's an example of that. He's, he's capable, he's had a couple of records of his own. sometimes people will come up and ask us how we got married in the group you know it's kind of a, a really kind of a long and involved story she's been with us I guess almost two years now and uh, just before she joined the group she came over to my apartment well um, Thelma was the original girl Thelma Camacho and um, she was my roommate at the time and ever since the group started like I was at their rehearsals because we were like sisters you know very good friends and I just grew into that whole thing so I knew them all and when Thelma decided to leave the group they were holding auditions and everything and Kenny had asked me why didn't you know I go down and and audition or this was before too why didn't I just see about being in the group now, Mary's a she's a truly one of the most professional people I've ever worked with in my life she comes in she's always in a good mood she's one of the most consistent people as far as moods that I've ever met she comes in she's always up I think if she were really ever down, either she wouldn't show it or she'd stay away from you. Because she just doesn't like to hassle anybody with her problems. I just feel if you can, like the happiness, or if you can just spread that or give a little moment of that. It sounds corny, but it is that really. Or take people's minds off of something for maybe an hour, you know, other than everything that's going on. Then in a way you've accomplished something. 
because I'm singing like a really weird line on the bottom. That's what I'm worried about. That's just paralleling the three of us. Okay, just one, two, three, four. Delay your fall on the end. Like, cause I, Love it. Let's do it one more time. Cause uh, one, two, three, four. Music is a minds off of something for maybe an hour you know other than everything that's going on then in a way you've accomplished something ken vassy on the other hand i think is an ex extreme musical talent i think that's one of ken's problems he suffers from too much ability well i've been traveling about seven years i first sang professionally when i was 14. Yeah. Rock and roll. Rock and roll. Uh, the really you know, raunchy kind of banging rock and roll that started in the mid 50s. Uh, I think I my first idol was Jerry Lee Lewis. Well, of course, I was in school, high school. And, uh, we had a little three or four piece band that I. That, we had there in Carrollton. We used to uh, we used to rehearse in the second story of the educational building there at the church at night, praying we wouldn't get caught. And I played trumpet for like eight years, starting from the time I was about ten till I graduated from high school. Uh, never professionally, but that was my main thing. Is where I learned all my music there and in the church, and then started with the with the rock thing, with different groups of people all the time. We sang and we worked as often as we could. And went, away to, went away to college, went to college there in my hometown and then later went away to school. That was a bust. And I finally just uh, took off out west. I started 
play guitar and learning as many chords as I could. I started working these little folk places. Worked my way out to Phoenix, Arizona. I was working in a little club there and Randy Sparks came through town one night. He took me to Los Angeles. people I've ever met. He, he can sing higher, harder, longer for any length of time than anybody I've ever met. And uh, he's got a lot of soul for a white man. <laughs> such an enormous talent and I think he can't understand in his own mind why he's not a really big star and it's awfully hard for me to explain because he's got the capability he's got the talent he's got everything he's he's right for today's market and um, Ken has a tendency to get irritable with people sometimes because he's so much of a perfectionist because sometimes you think now my occupation on this earth and everybody, you know, always says, well, what, 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 you know, what is my purpose in life? What is my meaning in life? Which I think is kind of foolish anyway. I think people just, people do what is there to be done. And if they do it well and enjoy doing it, then that's what they were, quote, were put here to do. Uh, sometimes I sit and think, well, I sing and play an instrument and write music and lyrics for a living. Yeah. Sometimes I find it incredibly silly. Uh, yeah. And then you come, then I, when I, when I think that's very, very silly, yeah. and I wonder why I'm doing it, then I think, well, well, you're doing a wonderful thing. You're entertaining people. You're making people enjoy themselves. And then I stop and think, well, 
what on earth do people need to be entertained for? actually has been with us second longest. Mickey's our drummer, as everyone probably knows by now, because he's been in all of our biographies, was with Trini Lopez for eight years. He was with Johnny Rivers for two years, with Dylan for a year and a half. My mom and dad are very young people. We kind of all grew up together. Mickey is, is probably the straightest of all of us. And when I say that, I mean that Mickey is probably the most down-home person of any of us. I started writing about a year or so ago, and I just signed with the Glacier Brothers in Nashville, and uh, I'm in the process of doing an album right now by myself. I wanted to play just guitar and sing, but I ended up playing drums on a couple things, laying down a guitar track first with a bass and, a, and, a, and steel. My album's going to be very country. Yeah. Hey man, I've been trying to get you all day hey, long. Come on, come on in. All come day long. Your phone's screwed up. Hey! Hey, folks, if y'all love each other, hold his mitt. Y'all don't know these folks here. That's Terry Williams. That's uh, Terry Arnold. Come in the door. Hey, once you get your phone, come down. Why don't you go get your gift card? Yeah, yeah, okay, you can go ahead. I believe they're afraid to get shut up by the Crisco. Hey! Hey! I started loving you again. What a fool I was to think I could get by. And even more importantly, the thing uh, about Mickey is that he's a He's a good-natured person. He's he's fun to be around. He I'm the kind of guy that I love. When we get into town and I have a day off, I say, hey, okay, let's go to the movies or let's do this or do that, you know. Very rarely anybody ever wants to do that, you know, and I usually have to go by myself. He's a, a very easy, easy to get along with. Anybody can get along with Mickey. Anybody. You don't care who you are. An ex-con can get along great with Mickey. Uh, got a heart of gold. But I talk to my kid every time. I always talk to my little boy. And uh, he gets such a charge. I always drop him a postcard from time to time. And he loves to get postcards in the mail, you know. And uh, that's the whole that's the whole reason for doing all this is for my family. And I'm in the process of writing a book right now too. And uh, I think it's, but the tentative title right now is called A Drummer Boy. We have a new boy with the group. I call him a boy because he's 20 years old and nobody's 20 years old anymore. And uh, John is probably the real, he's gonna be a very, very big musical factor to the group because we just added him about three weeks ago. And um, he came in really on a trial basis. He did some recording sessions with us in LA. And I did a few sessions for Kenny. And uh, I found out later that, that the group had been thinking about adding an organ piano player for about a year, but they really couldn't find anybody that they could get along with, you know, musically and, and personally, I suppose, too. And everybody dug him, but we didn't know how compatible he was going to be. And it's funny because you get a good working thing going and you don't want to let anybody come in and, and screw it up. And we were almost to a point to where we were afraid no one would fit in with our personality, so to speak. I was sitting around the house one day, I, I was living with my parents in Long Beach, and uh, Kenny calls from Kansas City and says, listen, I'd like to fly up to Kansas City and meet the guys in the group, you know. <laughs> I said, well, sure. <laughs> Zap. An hour later, I was on the plane, you know. 
and he came in and within two days he was like he'd been with us all his life on this particular album we had a gentleman play piano and organ for us and we were so knocked out by the job that he did on our album that we decided at the studio then and there that we couldn't be without him so he has now become a permanent member of first edition a brother probably one of the one of the finest men on keyboard that we've ever seen mr john hobbs yeah. ladies and gentlemen try to explain to him I say man you have no conception of what's gonna happen to you in the next couple of years and how this is gonna change your life I wish there was some way I could explain to him what it's gonna do for him Russell, our road manager, who is the guy that just sort of keeps us all living on a road, you know. Russell is a Russell is a complete trip in his in his cell. You know. <laughs> Russell is um, is unreal. <laughs> Thank you. 
don't know whether you're interested in, you say, start a musical training. Uh, I was born in Houston, Texas, and the first professional job I had was when I was four years old. I sang for the nurses around the corner from my house at the St. Joseph's Hospital, and I made 50 cents. It was a, I didn't pay any commissions on it, so it was really clear money. Instead of the relationship going any further as a friendship, it's gone further as a business relationship only because we've been confronted with that, you know, uh, being that the two of us are partners now. I know. And I found out that there was a great deal more demand for bad bass players than there were bad guitar players, so I took up bass. Kenny puts himself down a lot. Puts himself down uh, thinking that he's not a good musician as he thinks, as other people think he is. Me, I'm not a good electric bass player. I enjoy playing, but... Um, I play relatively good time, and I play the right notes most of the time. I'm very sloppy. I just believe in doing what feels right. Kenny has a, has a knack for having ideas, and his ideas generally are right. When we put the group together, we had a, if you will, game plan in that in the choosing of the name the choosing of the our clothes our physical appearance um choosing of material so forth and so on we decided that we wanted to include the kids but not exclude the older people um mainly i guess for no specific reason other than well, i'm 32 years old and it's um it's awfully hard i don't care how hard you try and i'm in the midst of the if you will the teenage music and it's awfully hard for me to relate you know, to the really younger market buying public. I would love to, I would really, I think that's the secret in, in uh, forgetting professional attitude. I think that's the secret in, in the quotation mark generation gap, closing it, is being able to understand their music and see what it is they see about it. But I don't, I don't think it's really, quite honestly, I don't think it's possible. It's a, it's a music of their time. It's a music about their experiences and, uh, I don't think it's something that we can really relate to, no matter how hard we try. Well, the morning's come, and Lord, my mind is aching. The sun shines quietly standing at my Just like the dawn, my heart is slowly breaking. And with my tears goes tumbling to the floor. Once again, the heart. Yes, Lord, I've seen the pity in their eyes. They could never understand. It's her sorrow, not a man. No matter what they say, I know she tried. It's her mind She didn't mean to be unkind Why she woke me up To say goodbye Hard day's game. <laughs> this hits B spot. I will move B rock now. <laughs>
<laughs> it's a football player. Stay away from dynamite camps. Save your hands and eyes. That's you need thing. them. I smoke these. But then, I do not have to run. I'm on the line. Now he is going through his workout. All right. Oh, yeah. Just working out, coach. How's the lather? It's still moist. Yeah, sure is. Okay, we got a letter. Says, uh, we've gone through these three pieces completely before sending them to you. What I want to talk to you about. <laughs> you know, I find myself waking up sometimes in the morning. Like, where am I? Are we? Are we uh, still in the United States? And then, then people come up and ask you, uh, well. I saw you guys so-and-so, and now you're here. Well, where have you been since? Here you go. Uh, uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, the road is a, is, a, is a place that's chock full of experiences, um, one right after another. Uh, there's a whole different experience every day. Something new is constantly happening. You wake up and you say, well, I wonder what can happen to us today. Is this our bus driver? What do you got? Pizzas, beer, and pizza. Oh, Get back! What a guy. Get back! Get back! Thank you, Chris. Get back to where you was belong. <laughs> Down through here, so a big lot of it don't catch. Mirror, honey. Light it. Just, you got one? <laughs> I believe you guys are having this much trouble. <laughs> Baby sister drank it. After a hard day in the trees with the monkeys. We reach for these. I'm Nourishing, cold. delicious, and good for you. Where's and the lather's going? still wet. Sure is. How was it? Oh, it was delicious and nutritious. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> Hey, I can't, would you push the 
Wait. Give me some molten bread. Here's the cheese. How much footage, John, how much footage do you usually shoot? Oops. <laughs> of a specific Harley. subject. <laughs> Carrie! 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 Hey! <laughs> I don't want to say anything, but you know, if we spent $35 now, on food, we could have all back. had steaks for that. <laughs> Scott? Hang in there, Terry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you did a jacket! Oh, no, it ripped my jacket. jacket. That's your new jacket? Ripped it. I got it. Why don't we take Terry down and tear that jacket off of it? Yeah, let's do. Oh let's no! Do. Let's, let's do. Come on! Yeah! 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 Y
Um, and I still have not found out why I even do it. Speak to me. There's no time for playing games After all, we're all the same Just trying hard to lay it down What? Play Shamrock Drugs. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, Sergeant. They're going to cut us in here. They're going to cut us. <laughs> I still want to know where the candy oh, department is. Where's all the candy? I want to know where the candy is. Hey, hey, Terry, oh. get some batteries for the bus. Can we get some batteries for the bus? <laughs> oh. Oh no! Chewing gum funny face. <laughs> After a hard day on the stage, I reach for this. <laughs> Some people think my brother BB is the only one who knows how to play the blues. Well, I play the blues myself. <laughs> Hey, now tell me, have you ever seen such mass confusion as this in your life? Yeah! Yeah! Wow! Yeah! What, what condition I can be? I woke up this morning with the sun down shining in here. Found my mind in a brown paper bag. Well, here it is. Here, can we cut all these lights off here at the um, the heater? Or do you guys need those for your light? <laughs> Never mind cutting the lights off. So you want that one off? Oh no, it's too late now. We'll just we'll just hang around here and sweat. The fact that it's hot and that we're roasting and, and that we're stars, I don't think should enter into this. At all. Yeah, it doesn't. On a jagged sky Dropped in to see what condition my condition was in Ow! Hit him in the mouth You already did it, Harry Ow! Come here! Now don't do that again! You guys are like little brother and sister <laughs> She beats me up all the time yeah. <laughs> pleasure? No. <laughs> passport, passport which implies payment. which implies that it's a foreign thing, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. You need to think out of the county to a lot of people is foreign. Do you think passport. Passport also denotes <laughs> ticket. In other words, free ride. Passport and in as it were. Which in turn means the end of the chains, which is a bunch of ends. <laughs> uh, holiday? I don't know. <laughs> yes, sir. Pleasure. Hey, I am really lonely. It's hard, it's even hard to, to explain to anyone or to comprehend what, what you go through on the road. Uh, you go through an awful lot of garbage, obviously. Uh, you put up with an awful lot from a lot of people because of the fact that you have long hair or something uh, makes you the kind of person that 75% of the United States don't want to have anything to do with. Um, and yet, at the same time, no matter what you go through on the road, uh, hassle-wise, it's all 
it's all worth it the, the time you get up on stage. As soon as you're up on stage and the standing ovation at the end of a show or something is all worth everything that you go, that you go through. Tell it all, brother. Tell it all, brother. Before we fall, tell it all, brothers and sisters. Tell it all. How much you're holding back on me when you say you're giving up. And in the dungeons of your mind. Who you got chained to the wall? Tell it all, brother. Before we fall, tell it all, brothers and sisters. Tell it all. Did you plant your feet on higher ground? To avoid life's mud and stone Did you ever kick a good man when he was down Just to make yourself feel strong Oh, tell it all Before we fall Tell it all, brothers and sisters Before a crippled man Pretending you were lame And what made you think What feeble him to God Was gonna make him Oh, 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 oh,